All right, let's get to Cousin Nick, Nick Fernell here on The Morning Roast. Take me for a ride on a slow motion China down there. Where in the world is... The sexiest voice in all of sports mm-hmm. media, Nick yeah. Fernell. Nick has this rugged masculinity that all of us at ESPN are jealous of. <laughs> I don't know about friend of the program because I think you're lumping me in with being a friend of Brunel, and, and I don't want to be associated with all that. <laughs> Thank you, Nick, and your voice is very deep and sexy. I have to <laughs> What's you going to do, brother, yeah, exactly. when Mac Jones is coming for you? <laughs> How would you describe the level of hope that everyone else spoke with yesterday in regards to what James Wiseman brought. How would I, what are they talking about regarding Wiseman and like the impact he can make this season? Yeah, just, just how much it <laughs> is. Well, obviously, you can't predict the future. <laughs> we'll see what happens this summer. Um, but would you be willing to take less money? Bro, I'm, I'm not here. saying your questions no more. I'm sorry. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Uh, on the line is Odyssey <laughs> NBA insider Nick Fresnel. Insider calls are brought to you by the all-new Hyundai 2024 Santa Fe equipped for adventure. Ah, uh, cousin Nick, it never gets old. Long time no talk. Hey, last time I saw you, you're on Twitter taking a picture of Sarah Spain in a Cubs free training game. Now I just hear you came from Tokyo. Life is good for Cousin Nick right now. What the hell are you doing talking about this early? I mean, it's never going to get old, B. I, every time I hear y'all's voice and I <laughs> I hear that clip one more time, I get a big smile on my face. So everything's good. And actually, I was in Seoul the other day for that first the Dodger uh, Padre game. So. Did you bet on the Dodgers? <laughs> no. I, I, <laughs> I, was, I wish I had seen that. Uh, Ipe in between and you know maybe throw down a couple bucks but it, it was cool as hell and it's been uh it's been real fun just getting to travel around a little bit nick let's start right here i, I miss you an odyssey you. insider he's getting paid oh, Dude, odyssey no. jumped on this quick I, I seen you wrote a little something for the ringer too yeah yeah when uh when i left uh when i left espn i i had a couple stories i had been working on for a long time, and one of them was on Markel Fultz. Mm. And uh, when I left, they let me keep uh, the the quotes and and the time that I put in on those. And one of my old friends is an editor at the Ringer, and it, it found a place. But for those that don't know, I mean, Markel Fultz's story is is pretty cool. Just given that. He was the number one pick. Everybody was kind of ready to write him off completely out of the league, and he found his way back in Orlando. And he hadn't had the year that he's wanted to have, and certainly he, he thinks he still has a lot of time left, but he's become very quickly, guys, somebody that that entire room uh, works with and respects the hell out of. And and it was a cool story to report on, and, and it's, it's been really interesting to follow his journey the last year plus, and I, I think he's got time left to prove that he can stay in the league uh, a lot longer. But either way, no matter what happens from here, he has shown a lot because we all know there are a lot of top picks that just kind of fade away. Yep. You don't hear from him again. Yep. We know nothing that, about that over here. Yeah, yeah, right. Not not at all. No, not at all. <laughs> Speaking of Orlando, the Warriors are seeing them tomorrow night, and Orlando's – Kind of my, my man crush team. I've always talked about Paulo Bancaro and Wagner and how they have some of the worst three point shooting in the league and they have a lot of money this all season. Mm-mm, Clay Thompson, maybe that's a destination. Who knows? But they're fifth in the East and they're having a nice little run here. But we'll get to them a little bit later. But the Warriors, Nick, <laughs> coming off their bonus championship. Uh, <laughs> you said it, not me. Uh, they, <laughs> they lose to the Lakers last year at six and now they're in 10th place with the Rockets just to have game behind them. So what do you make of the Golden State Warriors so far this season? I haven't talked to you about the Dubs. I'm sure you've been watching from afar. It's been a, it's been a roller coaster uh, for people covering the team, for the team itself, all the different lineups. What do you make of the Warriors so far this season with 12 games remaining in the regular season? It will be, it always is a roller coaster. Yeah, <laughs> with this team, it's, it's always a roller coaster, good and bad, because there's still – so much interest in what they do night to night, not only in the Bay, but 
as as Joe and I discussed a few weeks ago, the NBA so desperately needs the Warriors to be relevant and good, and, and they're not really that good, but they're, they sure as hell are still relevant because they have so many fascinating personalities on the team, Steph obviously at the top. The reality for them is, as a group, they're, they're just not good enough. They, they are not good enough. This is the year frankly, that I thought they'd have a couple years ago, and that's why you and I are always laughing because the people really should enjoy the bonus title. That, that's not, that, that, that's not uh, something to, to take lightly. The fact that they won that title a couple years ago is, is shocking to me. Uh, a couple years later, it's still shocking within that organization that they got all the way back up to the top. So uh, in the moment, uh, they're just inconsistent. Uh, you guys hit on the reasons why all the time I'm still listening uh, every morning when I can, when I wake up, but it's Steph and everybody else. Mm-hmm. And it's funny listening to the, the clip that we always play when I, I come back on the show because guys, what I, the, the thought I've had, and I know you all have discussed it time and again, but just from a distance, what really shows up this year is just how much that Wiseman pick set everything back. Mm. Yep. It was just awful, and it's the reality of of being in the game and, and making the wrong draft pick, but there was so much hype that that player, whomever it may have been, was going to be that bridge, Steph Draymond Clay mm-hmm. plus whomever it was, and that person was going to help bridge the gap into you know the next phase of the Warriors. And Wiseman wasn't good, and they whiffed terribly and now uh, they've got a real problem because for as solid as Kaminga has been and the growth that he's shown when you look at the roster I'm not sure what the real fix is Steph just turned 36 I mean that (laughs) that's a real problem and and Clay is the player he is now so uh, you know there are a lot of reasons why uh, but when you look back on the decision to take Wiseman and you realize just how badly that imploded for the organization, that is a huge reason why they're in the place that they're in right now. That's a good point. Hey, Shasky, we were talking about that yesterday. They could have used a guy like Wiseman with every team in the West with the bigs and athleticism. It's crazy that Nick brought that up because that pick, whether it's Wiseman or not, is looming large over this organization. There's no doubt. So Let's let's spin this forward just a little bit because you know this guy and you know the team and you also know the NBA landscape. And at any time, any of these guys in this era can be disgruntled and want out. But just what you know about Steph and what you know about the Warriors and the NBA landscape, is there any part of you that thinks he might want out? Zero. And Joe, I say that not only having talked to him about it for several years, but having seen how things can change. I mean, Lillard only ever told me and every other person, I'm never leaving Portland. I love it here. This is where I want to be. And Portland was on the verge of a serious rebuild. He went, hey, you know what? I don't, I don't think I want to stay. Mm. It means so much to Steph. And he said it over and over and over again to be in one Jersey and in one place for his entire career. Now, that's all well and good when you're winning titles yep. and things are still fun on the floor. It's a whole different thing when, and I don't think the Warriors are walking into some kind of rebuild here this summer, but it's one thing when you're not competing for a title. And guys, this is a, another point that is so obvious, but I feel like it needs to be to discussed even more. The Warriors, they could get into the play in, Steph could create some magic and and maybe they upset whether it was OKC, Minnesota, who knows, but we're at a point now with the Warriors where you go, they're just not good enough to win a title. This isn't a team that's going to be happy getting bounced in the second round year after year. So I say that in the context of, I, I can't read Steph's mind in thinking, all right, well, that's good enough for him. Uh, everybody seems to be, uh, in in a, a good place. Yeah, family wise, he's very happy out there in the Bay. But if you're happy and you have no chance to win a title, what's that worth? Yeah. Only time will tell. I just tell you right now, knowing what I know, having talked to him about exactly this over the years, it would be very, very surprising to me if Steph Curry didn't finish his career 
as a warrior. It'd be a little surprising, but we've seen anything happen in this league, Nick. Uh, no doubt about that. Insider calls are brought to you by the all new Hyundai 2024 Santa Fe, equipped for adventure with capable features like available H track, all wheel drive, and standard third row seating. All right, Nick, since we have you on, and you obviously made the rounds for your Wiggins takes back in the day. <laughs> but we see what it's your Wiggins, boy. Like, give me a better laugh than that. <laughs> Nick, Nick, oh, boy. I know you don't get satisfaction out of seeing a player struggle, but the struggles have been alarming here. I thought he was the most important player coming into the season. And without his two-way play, the Warriors are now in 10th place. I don't think he's the end-all, be-all. He's the number one guy or the number one person to blame. But, boy, he's having a career low in just about every metric possible here. So if the Warriors do want to move off from Andrew Wiggins, one, what type of value does he have? Does any team want to even touch Andrew Wiggins considering what's happened in the last two years on the court? I'm not even talking about off the court because we don't know what's happening off the court. That could be a real thing that's affecting this game on the court. But on the court, we just see what we see. And right now we don't see a player that played capable or played like the player we saw in the 2022 NBA Finals. Well, B, it's a great point because the Warriors don't win that title without Andrew Wiggins. And I say that as somebody who watched all those years in Minnesota and was shaking my head from the moment the Warriors made that deal. I mean, I, I was just wrong that he couldn't fit into the culture the way that he did and raise the level of his play. He was awesome. He was the second best player on a title team during that run. Having said that, he's just not close to that player anymore. And as far as trade value across the league, any player is capable of being traded. That, yep. that we've seen that over and over again. Always so a sucker in the NBA. <laughs> that, that's right. There's never a question that somebody can be moved. Somebody could always be moved. The question for Mike Dunleavy and his staff now is, what would you have to attach, probably picks wise, to get off of that contract? I mean that that really to me, guys. Looking back, I mean, the, the pool contract is awful. They had to get out of that. Chris Paul, I, I don't think he has much of a future uh, in the Bay. The Wiggins contract, you know, he earned after being that second-best player on that title run, but that looks awful now. They're going to have to attach some assets to, to get off that if they do. The Clay contract, as we know, that's awful, but you know we're, we're going to see what happens. Uh, this summer and, and where he may or may not go and what that price point looks like. Let's but Stop you right there real quick. You think Clay's yeah. coming back? Because I, I get a gut feeling that Clay may move on. I, I just don't know what it, like, how can you, if the Warriors do want to resign Clay, and Clay's looking at Andrew Wiggins and Draymond Green and the money they're making, if you offer Clay anything below what they're making, and I know it's not a like-for-like -like situation, but wouldn't a guy like Clay feel a little bit disrespected saying, wait a minute here, I've been part of this too. B, I, it, to me, it's it's the the question that is going to hurt and linger around the fan base the most this summer because the three of us have had this conversation for years. Clay is beloved. He is beloved in in the Bay. He has been such a focal point for everything that they want to do, but he's just not the same player. I think the answer to your question right now, looking ahead, is. Just how strong is that relationship between Clay and Joe Lacob? And I remember talking to Lacob after that series uh, a few years ago, that last KD year when they beat Houston. And we were outside of the locker room in Houston, and and Joe was saying, Steph, I, I never want to see him leave. And Clay, we have built a very special relationship, and I don't want him to ever play for another team. Again, and it's interesting in the context of the Steph conversation we were just having, but that's all well and good when you're winning titles and you're playing at uh, a, a Hall of Fame level. I, Clay, uh, through no fault of his own, got injured twice, and things have changed, and he's just not the same player. So do I feel like uh, he's going to feel like he's disrespected as far as the money goes? Absolutely. I mean, he's competitive as hell. He, he still thinks he can be that same player. He, he's just not. So the question becomes... Just how badly does he want to stay? How badly is that legacy for him as not only an all-time warrior, but as an all-time warrior who never left and went somewhere else? He's going to have to take less money, you'd figure, uh, to to do that. And in my mind, it's going to be that conversation between Lacob and Clay and saying, all right, how badly 
Uh, do you want that to be part of your story that you were one of those guys uh, that stayed forever and ever? So there are always great questions and intrigue around this team, guys. But as far as Clay goes, uh, would it surprise me if he left? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, but the Wiggins thing is, uh, is, is just as big of a question because when you're play, paying a player who's not living up to that max contract and he certainly isn't anymore on top of B you mentioned I, we, we're not sure what's going on off the floor but something right. very clearly is a miss there when you factor all that stuff in that's why if you're a Warriors fan Steph is Steph and he's still incredible but there are there are too many questions behind Steph to make you think that they're going to be able to turn it around to a point where again not that you're in the playoffs and you can be competitive but that you're competing for titles. Yeah. And, and I just don't see that happening again for this core group. All right. Insider calls are brought to you by the all-new Hyundai 2024 Santa Fe, equipped for adventure with capable features like H-Track, all-wheel drive, and standard third-row seating. Let's do a quick exercise here. All right? Quick exercise, Nick. One sentence on all of these with a percentage point here. All right? I want to rat-a-tat-tat this. As I throw a piece of paper across, because you have such so, so much money attached yeah, to your name. Yeah, no, you got. Hey, we're saying show. Hyundai wrong. It's right. Hyundai, fairly. Oh, I didn't know. We that. both said that. We oh, both said Hyundai. I didn't know that. It's right. the San Francisco well, thing. I mean, Hyundai. I mean, Sorry, Nick. We just blew your money. Excuse me. Hey, the right. car. Percentage chance. Steph Curry, Draymond Green, and Clay Thompson are all playing together on the Warriors next year. Uh, I would give it fifty-one uh, percent. Okay. Percentage chance Draymond Green and Steph Curry are here playing together with no clay next year. Uh I I would say still thirty thirty percent because I think they're all coming back. Okay. What about what about Draymond getting traded at all? <sighs> Not high. Let's okay. go with twenty. Okay. What about just Steph Curry here without Draymond and without Clay Thompson. I I don't see it. I, okay. I, let's go ten percent because Joe, you guys have have nailed it in that anything is going to be on the table yep. going into the summer. But I just don't see everything crumbling to a point where the three figureheads of this dynasty aren't going to to be together. Okay, could one guy Clay or Draymond be out? Uh, maybe, but I, I still, I, I just don't see that scenario All right. playing out. How about this one? Percentage chance Steph Curry and LeBron James oh, team up in a gosh. Warrior uniform? Oh no, oh, no, 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 Dick, no, yeah, no. Yeah, I don't think. Oh, I'm, I'm having flashbacks to the days where I would look on the Zoom screen <laughs> and I would see Mr. Shasky looking around and, and that huge smile is on his face, like, yeah, I know, I just threw out some BS, but I'm rolling with it anyway. Yeah, no, trust me. <laughs> no, no, thank two, you, Nick. <laughs> thank two you are Nick. not going to be thank you, Nick. up. Gosh, and why you know, is he kissing his butt? Listen, why why listen, is LeBron James listen, kissing listen. Steph's butt yeah, so much? I know it's it's wild, right, Nick? But but like I'm just thinking about my gig at NBC Sports Bay Area. And how high and, the profile and, would and, be? No, no, the ratings would be through the roof. Nick but I'll probably be, be back on the beat. I, Draymond wouldn't be the only one checking me on a post game interview. But but also <laughs> but also like from one the, king Drew, to another. LeBron, you hear LeBron the other day talking about his podcast like. This podcast was needed for the kids, for the kids. And I'm oh, just like, God. oh, God, oh, man. Can you imagine covering that every single day? I mean, it would it would be nonstop entertainment. But in <laughs> truth, guys, really, I think it would be bad for the league. And I say that sincerely because we've all discussed for years, it's LeBron, there's a gap, and then it's Steph. Those two teams day to day are the two teams that people care about, even casually. They always want to know what's going on with those two guys. If you put those two guys on the same team for as much attention as it, they would get and it would be off the charts, I think it actually hurts the league because then you're, you're losing a, a large amount of interest in a Laker team that Certainly is always going to be relevant, but right. take LeBron off the Lakers, and I, then then it's just one team that everybody's locked into day to day. So what about Kevin Durant coming? What about Giannis? I mean, come on, Nick, I'm dying here. No, I mean, the well, boat's taking all water. No, truly, and we've come full circle now in the conversation. This is the problem. It really is. 
the well, star was supposed to be that pick. <laughs> was Wiseman or or Ball or whomever it was. It could have been Halliburton. I mean, I, we, we've gone through all the, the possibilities. <laughs> that star was supposed to be the bridge, yep. and that bridge no longer exists. And it's not that the Warriors are going to shrivel up and disappear now because Steph is still at that incredibly high level. But when you whiff on that pick and you can't just line up KD or Giannis to come on down like the old days from six, seven years ago, if you're the Warriors, there's only so much you can do. Yep. And for as great uh, of the decisions that Bob Myers and Dunleavy certainly in the draft uh, have, have made, when you whiff on that type of pick, that has a lasting impact for years on an organization. And I think the Warriors are just starting to feel it now. Inside the downfall is near and it's coming hard. <laughs> I Inside hate you. calls are brought to you by the all-new Hyundai <laughs> 2024 Santa Fe. Equipped for adventure with capable features like available H-Track, all-wheel drive, and standard third-row seating. All right, last one here. Since you said who's that star, who could you build around is Jonathan Kaminga a guy you could build a team around in the future? He's ascended in his third year. There's still some things he needs to work on, but is J.K. a guy you could build around here for the foreseeable future if you're going to go to State Warriors, Nick? B, he, he's been really, really good. Uh, he obviously is putting in a lot of extra work, and uh, the staff has helped him develop. But I don't, when I watch him, view him as the type of player who's going to ascend to that level. Because that's... That's the other key. I mean, there's so much nuance always in this conversation with the Warriors, but with any team, it's like, okay, he looks a lot better, but can he develop into the face of a team or, or one of the stalwarts of that group every single night? And I think that's still what's missing from his game. He's had some unbelievable performances, but there's some other times where you watch him and you're like, all right, well, he's still got some work to do. So uh, if we're trying to play it out, I don't think he can get to that point, but if he keeps improving, uh, he's going to be uh, somebody that they really, really need. But when you're used to winning titles, and that's the expectation, yeah. anything less than that uh, just isn't good enough, and those are the types of decisions that, that Dunleavy and his group are going to have to really figure out here in the next few months. Can you wire me half a million dollars? I owe somebody some money. <laughs> <laughs> if I had it to give you, I, I could. I mean, I, I wish I had the codes like, you know, eBay and, and could just pop into everybody's account and, are, are and pull you, everything out. Are you in Orlando right now? You're in the, you're yeah, I'm actually, you know, it's crazy. I'm going to the game tomorrow. Oh, I'm covering yes. the game. Oh, boy. And the only game I've been to up to this point was that Warriors game in Chicago where they were booing Jerry Krause oh, yes. on the jumbo. Yeah. Not, but when, when, I, when I walked into <laughs> the locker room and I see uh, some of the guys and I'm, I'm talking to Kerr and everybody, they're like, what have you been doing? I'm like, <laughs> not much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's been an interesting few months. I feel like it's, it's a strange bookend. Like I see them in January in Chicago and, and the vibes were way off. And now I'll see them in Orlando tomorrow and we'll see where they're at uh, heading into the last couple weeks of the season. The Rockets are coming. We definitely have some intrigue there. I love you, buddy. Um, uh, we may be... We may be they need to get Nick on uh, Warriors pre and post from Orlando or something like that. We'll just make up some. <laughs> hey, he works for the he Rigger. He an appearance before me. I'm, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm holding Shasky back. We, the last thing we need is Shasky on Warriors pre and post. Because the end will be near. The end would be near. Joe Lincoln, what is he doing? He just made everybody tune out. There's a new court jester in town, King. <laughs> Step aside. The it never changes, and I love it. I, I love it. Changes. It never changes. It never changes. All right, Nick. Have man. A good good one. to hear from you, brother. Absolutely, always. Love y'all. Yep, to you. love you too, man. Miss Nick Fernell, man. Nick, Miss Nick out here. He's one of the good guys. I was on the NBA insider Nick Fernell. Insider Calls all brought to you by the all-new Hyundai 2024 Santa Fe, equipped for adventure. Nick Fernell, whatever you